I originally had a different kind of video planned for today, um, but it's been a week, really interesting week. I guess I didn't really see coming where R.E.M. got indicted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. And there's been a lot of press about them, about the group interviews, the first group interview, all four of them, including Bill Berry, just the core, uh, interviewed on CBS this morning, and then also uh, playing. They actually played a song, Losing My Religion, at the um, Songwriters Hall of Fame. In addition to that, Mike Mills also did an interview with Rick Be- Beato. Is that right? Beato? Beato? I think it's Beato. Um, that's really great. It's a, it's a long one where he discusses songwriting. And that's the thing I liked about all of this stuff is all about their songs. Stipe did an interview as well um, with uh, Janine Garofalo, which was excellent as well. So these guys are they're in the public eye again. They're doing some press interviews around songwriting, which I think has always been their strength. Uh, REM. They're just brilliant, brilliant songwriters. And it really is the core of them. Barry, Buck, Mills, Stipe. I remember noticing that when I first got into them, all songs Barry, Bills, Barry, Buck, Mills, Stipe. They split everything equally. They all wrote songs. And they've been, I think, pretty guarded about who wrote what, although I find it fascinating in recent interviews, including all of these, where they do kind of talk a little bit about individual songs and who played what on them. But I think it's just such a testament to the band to have such strong songs. I mean, even if you, you know, even if you limit it to their first five records, you've got ama- the IRS years, you've got amazing songs. I remember when I got into them, I was completely shocked when I picked up Dead Letter Office and I thought, this is as good, their B side collection, this is as good as most of the other bands I'm into's latest record. You know, and those were just leftovers, failed experiments, um, cover songs, uh, really great liner notes by Peter Buck, and the c- brilliant cover of Pylon's Crazy, too, which is one of my favorite REM moments, actually. I love that cover. And they did that when I saw them in 87 on the document tour as well. But, you know, I love this celebration of, of songwriting for them and really reminding people of just what really good songwriters they were and also the principles that they had of splitting the songwriting equally. Uh, controlling their masters, owning their masters rather, controlling their publishing, all that stuff. They did everything on their term. And it's just really cool to see a band that's been around for as long as they are with some upheaval, like Bill Berry leaving, come together for these interviews and just seem so comfortable with each other and respectful of each other. And I don't know. I just wanted it. I wanted those interviews to go on forever. I hope there's another one. I hope maybe Peter Buck did a long interview or something that's going to come on. I don't know. But I'm really enjoying this week of seeing this stuff. Um, there's a 40-minute extended version of the CBS Mornings interview, which is great. I mean, the edited version was good, but I think when you see the whole thing, a lot of stuff just is so much better in context. And you really see that they're pretty at ease with each other. Seeing all four of them, of course, I'm just like, mm, it would be so nice to have some sort of reunion. I'm probably different than a lot of people. I was actually, I'm a huge REM fan. They're probably my favorite band. I was actually kind of happy when they broke up. I think kind of in the same way they were. I was like, they've kind of done it all. And I don't know. I thought their latest records were, they were good. Accelerate and Collapse in an Hour, kind of them on an upswing again. But I don't know. Um I don't, I just, I was kind of like, I remember my friend Kyle came up to me at work. We worked together and he's like, REM just broke up. And my first word out of my mouth was good, good. And I think because they were so special and like, why contaminate it? Why pollute it? You've got these 15 records, some are, you know, way better than others. But I don't really think, a lot of people like to diss on Around the Sun. I I still don't think that's like a bad record. I mean, if you've got Leaving New York on it, I Want It To Be Wrong, Final Straw, I don't know. I like the Son of Man and and High Speed Train a lot. I mean, you've got quality songs on there. It's it's still, it's not a failure, right? So I don't know. It was kind of cool to kind of put a cap on it and say it's the end. But there's something about seeing Bill Barry back, the four of them, and knowing that Bill Barry's been playing again and put out a side project recently where you're just like, oh man, it would be cool to have them do new music again. And you always wonder, like, do they just, do they ever, do they ever, like, just 
feel like maybe collaborating on some new stuff. I know that they would, they would never, I don't think they would ever do just a money grab tour. They, I don't think they care. I mean, and they're a great live band. I saw them in um, two or three times on the last tour, 2008. I might've gone into 2009. I think three times. I saw them at South by Southwest. I saw them on the Vote for Change tour. I don't know, maybe that's 2004. I'm getting confused. I know I saw them twice, at least. Anyway, they were they were always a great band, and they were exceptional, exceptional on that tour. But I don't really desire to see them go play a bunch of shows and arena shows. I, I, I don't. I, I mean, if they did it, I would probably go. But I just, I hope they don't. I don't desire that. What I do think would be really cool is if they put out, and I've said this before, I don't know if I said it on this channel, on my YouTube channel, but I think if they put out, if they got back together and they just wrote songs out of the love of it, just wanted to write some songs, and maybe it would be in the automatic vein, that would be my preference, right, where it's just kind of stripped down stuff, you know, they can play live, and they record it, and they put it out as, this is this is what I would, this is my fantasy, they put it out as Barry Buck Mills Stipes, not R.E.M., and then they do a handful of shows around it, and and just they're like, and then they leave it open, like I don't know, maybe we'll do it again, maybe not, but we we wanted to do something as friends. That I think would be amazing. But I'm a hundred percent with them, and like no, like leave REM alone, but talk about it, like give us more insight. I mean, they were so mysterious for so long, and they've got so many good stories that they can tell about their songs. There was this uh, I'm forgetting the name of it where they. Uh, something something song analyzer or something like that is a podcast where they dissect a song and they dissected try not to breathe and it was so fascinating just all the isolated tracks and everything that went into that um just masterful and i'm i'm a musician in that i write songs i can i play guitar well enough and i can use software well enough to get my ideas out but holy cow i mean i just can't imagine being with uh, people who can shape songs like that and come up with counter melodies and counter hooks and the background vocals that Mills would do and they're just so incredibly talented and uh, yeah I just wanted to share like some of my thoughts about it it was really cool to see them play a song last night um, on, on the uh, the Songwriters Hall of Fame presentation somebody recorded it I'm hoping a more of a professional shoot will come out of it at some point but I do wish they hadn't done Lose My Religion. I, I don't know. Um, it's, yes, it's our biggest song, but it would been, I thought it would have been really cool had they picked something more obscure and, and just like truly wowed people. But it was really cool to see. I especially enjoy all these interviews and all that. And it's gotten me once again to go back to a catalog um, that continues to impress years and years later uh, I cranked up a little bit of document and I started getting a headache actually I think it was a little too loud and then I put on an album um, that I'm actually starting to really warm up to that I I, I always thought was so patchy uh, which is out of time um, I you know there's certain parts of that album I just absolutely love and even the obnoxious even the overplayed songs I think are starting to uh, I don't know they, they sound good in context now with, with distance. Okay, I've got an airplane or something going on overhead. It's getting a little loud, but that's what I want to talk about. I just want to talk about REM. I've talked about them before. I'll talk about them again, but I think it's an interesting week and um, really nice to see them appreciated and songwriting is their thing. I mean, they, they've said it in those interviews if they want to be remembered for anything. It's, it's that. It's the, the craft of the songs that they wrote and the timelessness of it. And uh, yeah, just really cool. It's like the little band that could. So that's it. Thanks.